Hello YouTube and welcome to the Indie Evolution channel. My name is In Gamer, and today we're going to be playing the 7 day demo of Dead State. This is going to be episode number 15 of the series. Uh, for those of you who have been following, you know we've already lost two party members. Joel, we also lost Renee's mother uh, in episode 13. In episode 14, I actually found that I was unable to return to my shelter. I had to keep trudging on. Uh, to the supermarket to continue our mission to gather food. In this mission, we're going to be trying to return back to our shelter. Um, minus two party members, but uh, carrying a lot more supplies. So, a um, couple things I noticed, things that aren't implemented in the game yet. Uh, really, the character Renee, the NPC, showed no reaction. Um to her mother being killed her dialogue options have not changed I think that's more a product of this being a early access a lot of the, what's in the game hasn't been implemented yet what I would actually say this is for anyone who's interested in purchasing it and participating in the early access demo this is basically a test drive of the engine um, it shows off the combat in the game a little bit of the strategic element there's dialogue, but there aren't any real dialogue options. The dialogue is static. You're not really affecting any change in a storyline with the conversation as it exists now. Um, so if you're interested in getting into the early access into the seven-day demo, know that your time, your play time will be limited to seven in-game days. Um, and also those character creation, character progression, um, dialogue and strategic elements of the game are not yet implemented. So with that being said, we're going to move on with our with our game here and we're just going to try to make our way back to the shelter. Hopefully that random event has cleared, dissipated. We did kill all of the bandits, uh, but in doing so we attracted so many undead with bullet with gunfire and noise. Uh, that it made it an unwinnable battle, and uh, two of our team members were unable to escape. So, like I said, because of the limited, normally this would be where Joel was standing. Um, and we'll just. Uh, go back and talk to Davis here, tell him the mission's complete. Okay, and it looks like we can't actually tell him the mission is complete. That chatter on the radio, that is the same chatter that was there when we left, I'm sure of it. And we can see this area here where Renee used to stand by the job board. That's no longer... Um, She's obviously no longer there, so. And then there were four. Uh, this pastime button has been added to allow you to perform different tasks um, and simply to pass the time so that they can be completed without you having to leave the shelter. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try to make some Molotov cocktails, I believe. You can see that much of the what you can build at your base is grayed out, uh, either because we lack the facilities, which are also not implemented in the game, or because we lack the, the tools to perform the job, one of the, one of the two. Uh, hopefully, as this gets better implemented, I'll be able to bring you guys some information on it. And uh, show how some of those strategic elements of the game are going to function. This, of course, is the survivor, Elaine. Who um, was in the plane crash with us. She's still distraught, unreachable. Uh, we've tried to com have conversation with her every day uh, to no avail. So we will continue to try that as the Let's Play goes on. And this will effectively end our day. And we can see our food items gained here at 47. I don't like that that's in such small text, but, um, you know, we'll live with it. 
total fresh food storage. It gives us all our statistics. Uh, right now we're in really good shape as far as as far as food is concerned. Not a lot of fresh stuff, but but that's okay. Um, and we can see that one of our allies was infected. One of our allies turned into one of the undead, and two of our allies died. So we took a big hit to morale. But we had built up so much that I, I don't I don't think it's going to really affect us. And I don't think those effects are implemented in the game yet. And then here's Davis. There's something I've been meaning to discuss with you. Sure, let's talk. There's something I'm concerned about. I've been here over a week and nothing's changed. As far as I know, help isn't on the way. Which means we may be here for weeks, maybe months. And we're not equipped for that at all. Yeah, especially now that two people are dead. Um, that's a good point. I'm surprised you hadn't already come to the same conclusion. Well, I'm still mourning the death of our friends. We'll need more food, medicine, supplies, fuel for the generator, and ways to defend ourselves. We can't just sit here and wait. We have to function as if no one else is coming for us. I've thought it over a lot. I noticed that after you picked her up from the Leno trip, Renee seemed more confident in her abilities. Someone here needs to make the final call on difficult decisions. I don't think anyone else here is prepared to do that. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You need someone to lead. Well, yes. That's the kind of intuition that I think would go far. He kind of spelled it out, but okay. If there's anyone who can get us through this, it's me. Yes, well... It's going to be tough, no doubt. People's way of life, their support groups, their routines, all of that is gone. There's going to, they're going to be on edge, combative. And we're going to need even more of them under this roof. We're going to need to keep this place secure and stocked with essentials, but also balance it with the needs of our group. I'd suggest we start modifying the school to become a long-term shelter. You won't please everyone all the time, but chiefly we need to keep morale up. If this place falls apart from within, people are going to start to realize there's no, they're no better in here than they are out there. Anyhow, no pressure. At the current rate, there won't be any of us left. So, <laughs> just be me and him in here talking again. Well, let's get started. Of course, I'll be here if you need any help. While you're out looking for supplies or other survivors, I'll keep an eye on progress here and let you know if I spot any problems. Thank you, Davis. I won't let you down. Well, good luck to all of us. And Davis returns listening to the radio. Oh, and there is a response here. I can't... I can't believe she's dead. She was so strong. Always so strong. My mom is dead. She would want you to be strong for her. I've never been able to. Maybe that's why she was so protective. I don't know what it's like to not have her watching out for me. Do you understand how frightening that is? I'm frightened all the time. I can barely sleep at night. You are? I never thought you of all people could be scared. I want to have a funeral for her. 
It's what she would have wanted. What I need. Wow, neither, neither one of these are good. We don't have time, and we can't waste the resources. Sorry, but I'm a complete... Oh, wait a second. Sorry, but these are extreme circumstances. So apparently you can't uh, pick an option to have the funeral. That's kind of... No, it's even more important. It makes our life feel like it still means something, even now. Do you feel like you're just some herd animal? And it was just your time? We can't do this right now. I'm sorry for your loss. Excuse me. That's it? That's all she gets? God damn you and this place. She pushes me aside and runs off crying. Wow, that that was a, a kind of a low point, I'd say. I mean, it gives you two options, and both of them are, are the answer no. That doesn't really make sense, but... Maybe the funeral part of the game isn't implemented yet. It's hard to say. Elaine is crying less today, but she has been staring at the floor for hours. You can talk to me, Elaine. Elaine's hands clawed her legs, but she does not look up. I'll just sit here and wait for you to say something. That's all. Elaine's head goes slack and she begins sobbing quietly. It's all right. I'm here for you. Elaine whispers as if she's trying to say something, then shakes her head. Yes, Elaine? It was... I'm so sorry. Okay, so Elaine is gradually uh, coming around. Somewhat. Um, I am interested. I just want to see if I can talk further to Renee. And see if that dialogue goes anywhere. I'd really like to be left alone now, okay? Anything I could do to improve your mood? I got really addicted to coffee in college. The good stuff, not that... F okay. Okay, so it's still kind of the same. You know, there is some dialogue that signifies that she, she lost someone, but outside of that, it's, it's kind of the same thing. And actually, I can't trade items with her now, which is kind of odd. I wonder if she actually is going to refuse to be part of the away team because her morale is so low. Okay, so nothing really from Davis. We'll try the radio. It's hot today. So hot I saw a rattlesnake swallow a popsicle. So hot that I'm debating cracking the door open. Except I have one confession to make. You ready? I'm an enormous coward, and even though this place is miles to anything resembling civilization, the door stays closed from now. I'm not risking death for a cross breeze. You want to know something potentially hilarious? Obviously, this station is still getting power from somewhere, right? Well, I went to turn on the air conditioning the first day I was here, and I found a note in it. I'm going to read that for you right now. Do not turn on air. Broken. Only blows hot air. No one coming next week. Isn't that funny? Anyone want to take odds on that delivery? I'm starting to get delirious slash sweaty. So damn hot. Let's just go to some music to take our minds off it. Let's see. Pony Airship, Bear Supply, Wolf Masons. So many wolf bands. Ah, here we go. Here's the latest, or maybe last, from Von Monsterface. It's called Plastic Guitar Star. And it's the only thing about today that's cool. Okay. So. 
I have a feeling um, the first missions came from Davis. The missions after that actually came from a mission came from Joel. Probably the next mission was going to come from Renee. Uh, and we won't be receiving that mission. So. Okay. So we will just try to, um, we're going to try to go out here and see if we can get ourselves into some trouble, I guess. See if we can uh, find some supplies, find some other survivors. Davis did mention adding more people to the shelter. That's something I've been interested in since the game started. Um, the next closest town appears to be Junction. And I just hit a roadblock. Okay. And this looks like the same group. Yeah, the Coyote Outlaws. Uh, these guys mean... Mean business. They're not joking around. Um, there's only two of them, but unfortunately we have no healing supplies. And I'm going to actually wait and let them come to me. Okay, there's a third one. Um, gonna equip a firearm. And I think we're going to go with the, let's just go with something that can do major damage. Okay. Again, I'm going to give, let them take the play here. Or actually what would be nice if I could just. Yep, the only exit is on the other side of them. So I'm going to see if we can just maybe flank them and run around. And they're okay. Yeah, there's five of them. So I'm just going to see if I can maybe get away. Um... Because um, we have no hope in a straight-up fight with these guys. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> well, there's an armed looter over here who's also um, apparently not too pleased with them. He's taking them on as well. Um... I guess we'll just spend the X6 XP and take our shot. And we'll try to get her moved out. Oh, they are running her down now. Okay, we're going to fire another shot. That one missed the intended target. Okay, so we have a three-way conflict here. We have looters. 
on this part of the map. We have the guys who are enforcing this roadblock on this part of the map. Is it only three groups? Yeah. So we've got some, we got about three looters here. And then we have these bandits, I guess I'll call them, the Coyote Outlaws, the Coyote Gang, I guess you'd call them, who are trying to enforce this roadblock. And I've been shot. Oh, nasty bit of business with the uh, sledgehammer there. Okay, and now we're starting to attract zombies here. Wow. And I'm down. I thought there was some kind of silent agreement uh, between me and the looters that we were going to go after these uh, the guys who had the, the larger numbers on us. Um, agreement canceled. <laughs> they came right after me. Um... And that's all she wrote. Um, that's going to bring to an end episode 15 of the seven day demo of Dead State. Um, overall, guys, I did enjoy that that playthrough, even all the way up to the end. I mean, it, it um, it's, a, it's a pretty good game. It's a stripped down version of what the game will be. Uh, I'm going to be coming back with another video here shortly. Um, just giving a wrap up and a synopsis of Dead State. Uh, I'm going to continue to play the game. And uh, as the game continues to develop, I'll do another, probably another full Let's Play series once they lift the seven day restriction and once they improve the save system. The save system right now is um, not to my liking. Uh, you only get that one save game, you're kind of locked into an Iron Man mode. Um, I could always go back to that prior save point. And start playing from there again, but uh, I think I'm going to wait till these guys get a little closer to release, and uh, till there's more content in the game uh, than what's there now. Like I said, this is pretty much a tech demo. It's it really there's just the combat side of the game, um, which is good. It's enjoyable. I, I had a great time with the combat side of the game, but it's really going to be. I don't think that's going to be enough to carry the game come release. It's going to have to have some pretty strong performance in some other areas. And when those areas become available, we're going to get right back into Dead State, guys. Take it easy, Indie Evolution Channel. I am in the gamer.